तो वो खजीमा शो करें या आप शो करें आप इधर आ जाए ठीक है अवबिल्लाजीम बसमीम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ दॉन्स्टेक्ट एंड एल ई जे सेंट्रल कराची यूनिवर्सिटी today uh, we are very much lucky uh, that we have two eminent uh, speakers with us and uh, most uh, valuable personality so today's uh, webinar topic is uh, very attractive in terms of the network uh, transformation and the digital transformation that we are uh, facing uh, nowadays in terms of uh, it revolution and industrial 4.0 so today's webinar topic is network evolution so as you know that uh, internet plays a very vital role in nowadays in terms of convergence now the in terms of network job placement network responsibilities they are now changing over all there new uh, technology that arrive and convergence has created new complex job arenas in terms of network automation development developments engineer reliability engineer cyber operational and so on first of all uh, i would like to uh, introduce professor dr mohammad iqbal chaudhry sahab he is a very eminent scientist he is our uh, mentor and he is a pride of our country currently uh, professor dr mohammad iqbal chaudhry sahab is a director of icbcs center karachi university and also is have a charge of coordinator general of comstec that oic ministry of standing committee on scientific and technological cooperation dr saab is a member of national commission for science and technology fellow of academy and sciences for the developing world fellow of islamic world academy of sciences fellow of pakistan academy of sciences fellow of royal society fellow of chemical society of pakistan dr saab is a fellow of chinese academic sciences and comstec award in chemistry and eco award in education from federal in pakistan so it's it's our great honor that sir is with us so i would like to call uh, professor dr mohammad iqbal chaudhry to say a few word about uh, the comstec and its working sir bismillahir rahmanir rahim uh, good morning good afternoon and assalam alaikum to dear colleagues from different time zones we have uh, people in malaysia we're already evening and uh, and we have some people on the western side of pakistan so we have uh, different time zones and people are attending this very interesting webinar uh dr sadik has introduced me very generously and i would like to correct that i'm not the fellow of royal society there are only four of them uh, i'm a fellow of royal society of chemistry but uh, it is uh, indeed an honor that we have actually worked with many fellows of our society including professor salim al masdiki professor to salam professor tau rahman and professor zulfikar butta uh, this event which uh, professor sadiq ali khan has organized and for which we have a very accomplished young man uh, professor dr kashif nisar as a resource person is extremely important one and i just want to tell you uh, that uh, the whole uh, evolution of networking especially internet has made profound changes and development in human history if we can divide uh, the world 
uh, into two part pre internet and post internet will find that this is one event which has made the most profound changes in the way we live the way we interact and the way we entertain ourselves and uh, there is natural curiosity in us to know how this whole thing happened from defense laboratories of us to everybody's uh, cell phones this has been uh, an evolution of its own merit and people can write lots of book and we will people can write how the whole thing has adopted but perhaps no technology in the world has be, has adopted so rapidly and deployed a technology with so many meanings and application than internet so perhaps internet is one universal unifying force which uh, bring humanity together because we all are users of internet and certainly the topic would attract lots of attention i would like to mention that uh, being an institution of high learning our our center international center for chemical and biological sciences was the first one to actually used email and uh, uh, and and internet based searches so it was back in 1980s when the first uh, internet based literature survey of scientific work was carried out and was a historical location now we look back and we found that uh, a lot has happened in between but perhaps the most exciting part of the whole thing is what is coming forth the future holds uh, great promises and great excitement and for that precise reason i would like to request dr kashif to present his lecture but before that i would like to introduce this very promising and accomplished young man to kashif nisar uh belong to pakistan but he has actually done most of his studies abroad he got his postdoctoral studies from auckland university of technology auckland new zealand and before the postdoc he has completed his phd as a candidate with fully funding full funded uh, phd program at university of technology patanas malaysia which is a very prestigious university of our brotherly country malaysia through his major in computer network and information technology he has obtained solid training in research and development uh, writing funding proposals uh, general publication and as a consultant currently dr nisar is serving as an associate professor at the faculty of computing and informatics university of malaysia sabah in malaysia and uh, in 19 in 2014 he has served as a as a guest professor so like there's a long list of accomplishment of this young man his uh, associate uh, professorship his uh, adjunct positions and his visit to a whole range of different institutions in four continents as well as his association with many professional bodies really make him very distinguished the last i would like to read about uh, dr nisar is uh, that he's currently serving uh, as a member of editorial board of uh, several journals including ieee access ieee internet initiative internet technology letters uh, and as a reviewer of many journals he has been a regular contributor of uh, of uh, original research in this field and comstock is very happy to have uh, a person of his caliber delivering a lecture on a very interesting topic this is one of many lectures which comstock is regularly organizing and certainly it would add lots of uh, uh, value and uh, lots of interest in the knowledge of uh, participants and i can see that the hall is full now literally the online hall is full with about 90 people already so dr kashif floor is yours please Kindly unmute your mic, Dr. Kashif. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good evening to 
on i believe that it's after 3 or after 2 we start evening so i i think good afternoon or evening because we have here about uh, 5 12 means almost evening and your side may be afternoon and first of all i would like to say thanks uh, his excellency professor ikbal chaudhary for my comprehensive introduction and also i would like to say thanks uh, professor sadik Uh, Khan, uh, he introduced me uh, in Comstack, and now I, if you allow me to, I will start my presentation. Yes, please. please. Okay, I would like to share my screen. Okay, I would like to know. Can you see my screen, PowerPoint? Yes, please. Okay, that's great. Okay, welcome again. Uh, today, basically, uh, our gathering and discussion uh, about network app evaluation. As uh, His Excellency Professor Iqbal Chaudhary already informed us, basically, our internet made in 1969. under department of defense for military purposes not for public purposes but our internet change very fast nowadays without internet we cannot do anything in 2017 in new zealand one survey held okay if any earthquake come or volcano because in new zealand normally they have volcano and earthquake so they said what you need first the majority of people they said we need internet so means internet is very important uh, because why they want to con uh, communicate uh, with their family member they can communicate uh, with other people and if we have internet then uh, hospital also communicate with each other remote areas and other places as well as so let's move forward today my talk outline basically the fourth industrial revolution and internet of things ir 4.0 is uh, we can say our current generation like x generation millennium generation they are doing ir 4.0 first time uh, mentioned in one world economic forum uh, at germany basically they made uh, this idea ir 4.0 in germany under world economic forum and internet of things means uh, we have multiple uh, network heterogeneous networks such as mobile devices laptop uh, desktop android phones and other things these things connect with each other internet of things is smart home technologies of course uh, nowadays uh, we need smart cities smart homes and if we have internet we can do everything if we have internet we can do voice over ip right now due to internet we are communicating with each other thousands kilometer from one country to another country internet of things and banking 4.0 ir 4.0 in agriculture because as i know our country is an agriculture country and we need smart agriculture and i will i would like to discuss uh, regarding this matter my upcoming slides ir 4.0 and tourism Uh, that is also very important because we are living in malaysia malaysia is a tourist country and we stop our border since uh, march and until now so it is also very important we can start like virtual tourism and use ir 4.0 in tourism future internet and information centric network uh, in 2010 when jacobs and director for cisco he introduced new internet that is called future internet uh, it is uh, basically information centric network then it has some flavors like uh, content centric network another is a name data networking so that is something like a future evaluation or network evaluation and last but not least we will move forward to conclusion okay ir 4.0 basically this one is uh, a layman diagram because uh, um, i believe that we have a different uh, our audience may be from different faculty or different undergraduate student with postgraduate student or maybe academic staff so first basically 
I, uh, IR0 or IR1.0, basically end of uh, 18th century, it is something like a mecha uh, mechanical looming machines. Then we have assembly lines in 1913. Then we have a uh, first uh, programmable uh, logical controller. That is something uh, like assembly lines and other things as well as more enhanced version. And currently we have industrial 4.0, like industrial internet of things. First term came from IR 4.0. It is like uh, I, uh, internet of things. Then we have in everything on internet, not only internet of things, now everything on internet and internet of things uh, also with industries as well as. Okay, what is uh, the Internet of Things? Basically, Internet of Things, uh, heterogeneous network we can use for a smart healthcare. Suppose uh, something happened, uh, an accident happened or something happened, then these ambulance and paramedical staff and hospital can connect with each other via internet, either WiMAX, Wi-Fi, or satellite network, depend on guided or unguided network. And then, uh, they can save human because human is very important. Then smart grids. Uh, in uh, one village in Nepal, they use blockchain and uh, internet of things to share the electricity in a village. So they can, uh, we can use smart grid as well as smart environment or smart agriculture. Uh, suppose in Malaysia, basically we have two products, very famous. Uh, one is uh, palm oil. Another is rubber trees. Palm oils uh, grow very slow, but that's why uh, if we will do some smart uh, agriculture, we can put some sensor, heat sensor, motion sensor, and uh, pressure sensor, then uh, we can. Can you see my uh, slides? Excuse me, can you see my slides? Yeah, we can see your slides. Yeah. Suddenly something happened, it's okay, <laughs> because it's still uh, it's a connectivity issue. Okay, then a smart home or a smart city. Uh, smart city means uh, like uh, we have everything uh, related to internet of things and connect with the internet. And now you can see last time uh, we had a phones like 1st G to 4G now, like 1st G, uh, like AMS phones, we have to pay like both sides, caller and sender. So now one side need to pay and our... And we lost your screen. Okay, one minute. One minute. I think this one happened from your side. Maybe, maybe host can check. Yeah, communicate custody. One minute. Okay, now you can see my screen. Yes, please. Yes. Then uh, we have uh, smart transportation. Already uh, Mercedes uh, cargoes, they already started uh, smart cargo. And we have another term, it's called vehicle to vehicle network. Then this car can talk e with each other via internet. And if suppose any accident happened few kilometers ahead, then this car can communicate with each other. And then this car can uh, change the tracks also. Another thing we have a Tesla electric cars. These are future car also. 
okay, by 2021, 80% of our global traffic will be video. That is very important. That time I did my undergraduate 1.44 MB floppy drive more than enough for me. But now I think nowadays undergraduate student one terabyte also not enough because uh, they have uh, simulation tools with them. Then they need some graphic uh, simulators, some applications and other things as well as, and now we have YouTube and other social media video and audio. Lightest traffic uh, in our net on our network, basically SMS. After that, we have a audio and then video and audio traffic as well. If suppose we have more than 500 millisecond delay over network means then our real time traffic not good. So means like if half second delay, so I'm saying half second so delay sensitive, our network is delay sensitive. So now you can see here, uh, we have a different uh, traffic like FTP, web, peer-to-peer -peer network, video, DNS, telnets, and other as well as. Future uh, internet research areas, suppose uh, variable devices. Uh, we have one standard under IEEE, that is uh, body area network. Basically in bo body area network, uh, we can uh, wear uh, different gadgets. Those relate to body area, like a smartwatch and some uh, heartbeats uh, things and other things as well as. Then we have a building and home automations uh, like home appliance and other things as well as. Uh, suppose uh, if I have an Android, an Android application, then I can off my aircon and other home appliance from my office or real time from anywhere. The smart cities uh, also very important. Uh, some uh, like recently I gave one talk at uh, Muscat. Uh, they are planning uh, basically smart city as a mascot uh, during COVID-19 as well as, and then smart manufacturing, suppose uh, like uh, one gross big shopping mall, they, they have a tax, they have bar, due to these uh, tax, they can recognize how many goods they have and how many goods they have in their warehouses as well as. Smart uh, healthcare, like uh, e-health record and e-hospitals and other things as well as. Like if we have a e-medical record, then suppose centralized one, then uh, we can visit different doctors. Then we no need uh, medical reports and medical history because all history inside uh, e-medical record. And automobiles are very important also. Uh, some, uh, some companies, they are thinking electrical vehicles and driverless vehicle using also Google map and other things also. Uh, but everything related to internet as well as. Today, digital technologies, basically uh, we have uh, different type of digital technologies. Internet of things, uh, very important because uh, we have heterogeneous uh, network, either wireless sensor uh, network, mobile application server, internet service provider, web servers, and uh, processing server, cyber worlds, and six low and network as well as. And these are some smart devices. And you can see here, uh, basically 85% of our mobile devices are Android because uh, these are cheap and easy, easily available. And like 10% we have uh, iPhones and 5% unknown devices. I would like to say how they change, these mobile devices change. Basically they change uh, due to era like uh, Samsung used to make or used to sell rice or grocery but they change themselves and now they become almost number one mobile company seller. And they have 40 companies. They, they can make from mobile phones to ships, chemicals and other things as well as. Same like LG, home appliance, uh, also relate to internet. And they used to sell toothpaste and now they are home appliance companies and they basically work or their research based on Hitachi. Japan. Same like in Malaysia, we have one car, it's called Proton. Uh, everyone like to buy that car. And that is basically, uh, we transform that technology from Mustabishi, Japan. So we, uh, we, we, we have to trans uh, transform these technologies or these uh, things from different countries, then we can make ourselves as well as enhance 
Nine uh, technology pillars, IR 4.0. These are very important. Uh, suppose, uh, for example, simulations. Uh, simulations are very important because, uh, for example, if we have a lab, uh, Cisco lab, network lab, we cannot provide to each student these routers such as because we have limited limitations. That's why uh, we can provide them uh, simulation tools like packet tracer that is similar to real environment. And suppose, same like aeroplanes, we cannot ask to uh, train a pilot directly uh, fly aeroplanes. We gave them simulation tools. So these are very important. Then horizontal and vertical integrations, industrial internet of things. As I mentioned, we have only a drum that's all uh, IoT. Now we have industrial internet of things. Cybersecurity also very important in Malaysia. Basically, uh, we deal, uh, we seldomly see our real money. Like we use internet of uh, banking, mobile banking, and use credit card, debit card. So means uh, we seldomly see our money, real money. Then we deal with money, money matter. Then uh, cyber security is very important and other our personal and confidential documents as well as. Then uh, we have cloud computing. Of course, cloud computing also very uh, one of the future area and we can uh, save our data on clouds. Uh, for example, uh, we have a uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, SkyDrive, and other uh, licensed uh, clouds as well as, and Facebook basically also a cloud. Basically, they have all our information with us, uh, with them. Then we have uh, adaptive uh, manufacturing, supply chain uh, that I already mentioned, uh, like warehouse to uh, goods from uh, last consumer or customer, uh, big data analytics, uh, data is very important. Uh, suppose uh, we can do data mining. If suppose I want to visit maybe uh, Dubai, then uh, I no need to ask any friend or other people. Then I directly, I will go to their hotel website or Facebook page. I will see uh, previous uh, customer or stay people uh, comments. Then I can recognize either good comments or bad comments. Then I will go. Uh, myself due to data mining. Automation and robotics also. Uh, in Japan, basically, they discourage human emigration. They said we have enough reports as well as. Fourth industrial revolution, basically, uh, as I, this diagram and previous diagram, this diagram is more technical, previous one, uh, very journal diagram. Now you can see here, uh, we have uh, 18th century revolution. We had steam engines. Then we have a uh, mass production through electric energy. Uh, I would like to say that IEEE uh, introduced by few researchers such as uh, Granville, Nikola Tesla, Edison. Basically they meet with each other and they came up with electricity, bulb, and some people maybe uh, know or I don't know they know or not, uh, they don't know. Basically, Nikola Tesla uh, that time uh, introduced wireless electricity as well as 19th century. Third industry revolution, basically intelligent information revolution through computer, because then we had a computer and internet, then our, uh, our revolution went very fast. After that, we have a uh, fourth industry revolution 21st century, that is like a uh, big data, Internet of Things, cloud computing, they emerge with intelligence and information systems as well. And uh, you can see here 5G. Basically, Korea already started. I already visited a few times Korea. They already started in Seoul. Uh, we have free 5G at Seoul. And you can see 28, 280 times faster than LD. LD means 3G or 4G. Uh, basically, uh, in 5G, we have IPTV, we have uh, voice over IP very clear and download and upload speed higher than 3G or 4G. And China already started 6G. They are saying uh, they are going to start 6G as well as. Okay. By 2025, World Economic Forum say, says, 10% of people wearing cloth and reading glasses connect to the internet, like Google glasses. One trillion sensor connected to the 
internet because sensors are very cheap very useful especially remote areas and they have actor and sensor saying and they have multiple sensors like heat sensor motion sensor metal detector sensor uh, these are very important and they are basically light emitted diode as well as the first robotic uh, pharmaceutical in us the 3d printer car in production a uh, driverless car 10% of all cars on us roads 90% of population using smartphones because phones are very important uh, internet and phones uh, globally more trips uh, trips and journey via car sharing than in private cars like for example we have uh, grabs like we have uh, other vehicles taxi vehicles they have no cars uh, but they they have application and we download the application then we can register under them the first city with more than 50000 people and no traffic lights so these are future direction for networks each country has a different ir4.0 ideal like here in japan they have like key success factor in the fourth industrial revolution era that is called joint report of korean government like technology industry and society as well as you can hear me yes uh, we can we hear you that's great then impacting all aspects of value chain chain management uh, we have different type of uh, chain management suppose uh, global communication infrastructure supply chain management factory infrastructure human resources material sensors digital manufacturing and other things as well as the industry uh, 4.0 environment internet of things internet of services internet of people internet of data so everything is like computer field or electrical engineering basically emerging can emerge with any field like chemistry biology biotechnology like uh, doctors also nowadays uh, they use uh, this technology if someone want to be an engineer either chemical engineer mechanical engineer civil engineer they must uh, learn uh, programming language so that is very important industry 4.0 workflow transformations industries graduates and then technical institutes as well as they must encourage uh, uh, they communicate with each other A smart home for elder living uh, using wireless sensor network and android application basically that that is our own research uh, we have done because uh, if you want to do some research that research must be cost less cost more effective and must be cheaper and can be access to everyone we use android phones application sensors for elderly people like in germany in japan uh, majority people elders in malaysia as well as uh, old houses they live themselves so we if you provide uh, them smart homes then they can make their life very easy and simple so we can use in a, a smartphone like smart cctv smart windows smart doors smart fire alarms and other sensors as well as then these things connect with of course dynamic system dynamic website or web based or portal uh, various type of sensors then database of course and back end and front end we have a, an application gui smartphones and then we have a notification and update and digital of course zero one accurate as well as this one is a conceptual model can see my slides yes kashif um uh... okay okay we will continue again that is a smart uh, conceptual model like for a smart home we have smart washing machine dishwasher smart stove smart alarm cctv and other things as well as 
Then we have a line, line diagram for this research. After that, we have an Android application uh, that we already tested and published. Now I would like to move forward banking 4.0 because that is also very important networking. Like they had also one to four evaluation or revaluation like e-banking, uh, multi-channel integration, omnidirectional, omnidirectional channel, omnidirectional channels and internet of everything as well as. And they have by air. And normally we use these things, uh, PayPal, MasterCard and other things also for online shopping and other things as well as 30% of banking revenue actually are at risk also because security is very important. Then description of banking, basically we have a digital data and distribution and security is very important in banking. Let's move forward to data is the new oil. Basically, last time we said uh, petrol is oil, but now is a data is very important. We can manipulate data, we can evaluate data, we can do uh, we can do data mining. Uh, suppose I would like to give an example like Facebook. They have our all information. If they want any information about us, they have all information like a video, photographs, our location, Google Map, everything. Using data to empower customer like one bank, uh, they use that data and then they, they can empower the customer. They can, they have all information about customer and then uh, they can manage their customer as well as. And another thing is mobile, internet and branch cell. You can see last time we used to visit physical, any bank. Now we seldomly visit uh, physically, we use internet or sometimes we use our mobile banking as well as. So these are some according to years for 2012 to 2014. Agriculture 4.0 uh, basically focus on internet of things specs. Uh, basically uh, that is also very important. We can use drones. We can use a different type of network either unguided or guided wireless or wide network and we can improve our agriculture as well as. So we can use uh, some data inside in future farming as well as like uh, we have uh, last time we had in past we have animal to uh, make our field smooth and then we had uh, present we have uh, mobile phones drones and other things as well as we have fertilizer latest fertilizer and then we can increase our uh, agriculture as well as future basically future farming uh, must be inside like a control room and these farmers, uh, they will sit in control room, then they have sensor, uh, these drones, then these things can uh, evaluate weather, shoot and other things as well as. Okay, uh, and uh, agriculture 4.0 about connectivity. Connectivity is important because internet is very important and network is also very important. If we have no internet, then these things use less. So that is why we must put backbone uh, internet, like we have a one drum, normally our backbone internet fiber, uh, fiber optic, but uh, nowadays at home, uh, we have also FTTH, it is called fiber to home. In Malaysia, uh, throughout Malaysia, we have FTTH and that is uh, unified internet and very high speed internet at home. And also we need at agriculture field as well as, if we have no internet, then, uh, very difficult to communicate these agriculture things as well as data platform enabling, which is in agriculture. So as I mentioned, uh, we have control room and these things connected with internet of things like uh, these machineries, crops and other things as well as then uh, we can manipulate this data. We can evaluate this data. We can come up with new breeding for agriculture and crops as well as another thing, tourism and technology. Uh, Malaysia basically tourist country and we use uh, these uh, things for future tourism like uh, such as like evaluating uh, uh, visitor demand, sustainable uh, tourism growth, enable technologies, travel mobil mobilities and other things as well as we can use blockchain, VR, AR, artificial intelligence, then uh, we can use food productions, global middle class aging 
population emerging generations growth of traveler pandemic means like uh, security and natural disaster as well as so these are some online platform we use normally for travel uh, it is very easy and one example number one is ir 4.0 and tourism in japan basically they use robots means instead of human as a reception in new york for safety boxes uh, they have also robot and nowadays due to covid 19 uh, we cannot travel physical we can use vr i glider then uh, we can use this virtual tourism also conclusion for my this part uh, basically i have another part that is uh, future internet so that is something like uh, i can say internet of uh, everything or internet of things this connect with smart cities smart environment uh, smart energy smart agriculture e health retail logistic and industry now let's move forward that i said to you about uh, information centric network it was a uh, concluded that it's time to build a new internet from scratch and as f workshop 2005 basically to discuss our current internet based on tcp ip physical layer to application layer and it was uh, built for only for military purposes still we are using same internet that's why we have to come up with another internet future internet research started around 2005 like usa nsf and eu fp7 a framework program then asia fi means future internet forum japan say new generation network forum korea say future internet forum and these all things basically relate to information centric network introduced 2010 by van jacobsen cisco director okay the internet plays a central role in our society without internet nowadays we cannot do many things first we need electricity after that we need internet then i think everything communication especially networking or network evolution free basically almost free so nowadays uh, we are using whatsapp instead of sim cards and just only we need internet after that we can communicate with each other the internet uh, represents one of the most successful example of the benefits of sustainable investment uh, and commitment to the research and development of information infrastructure then uh, of course it's work on name data objects independent of location in depth of caching and replication as well as improve efficiency and security better scalability because uh, security scalability reliability efficiency connectivity these things very important so that is uh, a layman diagram i think uh, everyone can understand if you are from computer science or electrical engineering like normal internet basically everything over ip or ip over everything internet protocols so that is basically uh, tcp ip from physical layer to application layer but in information centric network that is one of the future network we have contents the, the key goal of icn research is to create refine and validate a narrow based protocol for information centric network because uh, we need to change only instead of ip content if we change content then we can use another internet or we can use parallel internet you know already ipv4 already finish ipv5 already die inside lab because nobody introduce and now we have ipv6 uh, still uh, we are confused because uh, we need uh, money because uh, we are not we are not going to change software we are going to change hardware because hardware uh, supports ip addresses suppose uh, router such as uh, if support uh, support uh, ipv4 then they cannot these uh, hardware cannot support or does not support uh, ipv6 uh, hardware that's why we have to change and it is about money matter that's why uh, very impossible to change or sometime it will take time that is why we have information centric network that is on contents 
This one is network cache topology, how it's work. Uh, we have a router with cache. Then we have edge network caches and network simulation as well as uh, this research we have done. So basically you can see we have a router without cache and router with caches, how this working because in information setting network, everything on content, content delivery network. We send our content, we send our location, we send our name, we send our centric, then we can communicate instead of IP addresses. Because IP addresses population increasing day by day. Last time we had only desktop, now we have mobile phone, we have Android phone, we have iPhone, we have a tablet, we have notebook, we have laptop. So means normally each person has two to three devices, means increasing our population regarding uh, IP addresses. Okay, ICN workshops and standard, basically uh, ACM, SIGCOM, info, information centric uh, network workshop, then they have conferences as well as ITF is very important. Uh, basically, uh, they introduce uh, internet research task force, uh, basically they are responsible to make internet, make a network, makes a network because uh, they they are responsible because they have uh, RFCs request for comments. So first we have to go through RFCs. After that, we will come up with uh, proper networking and other things. Then we publish and then implement. We have other organizations also, IEEE. We have ITU, International Telecommunication Union, T. T means telecommunication. Then we have research groups, information centric network research group. You can join also. I'm also a member. And then IT, uh, ITF further. So these are what different between ITF and IRT, Internet Research Task Force and Internet Engineering Task Force as well. How it's worked, basically, uh, we have another flavor of uh, information scientific network. It's called NDN, Name Data Networking. That is also future evaluation of our network, basic operation of multicasting. Basically, uh, suppose uh, we have different type of routers and these routers, basically NDN routers, not traditional routers. And that, that is the source, then user one content or A, then we have uh, user two content A, and these content basically uh, work via NDN routers, packet by packet, request by reply. Then you can see it's moving, uh, these are moving to cache and End user. Basically, still uh, NDN is a new, a new network area, and still they have a research gap in a pending interest table that is like a cache. Uh, because if we have a real time traffic, then uh, our real time traffic delay sensitive, end to end uh, delay sensitive. That's why uh, we have to solve here. That is a one research gap. Then we have aggregation between domains as well as that is our paper. Basically, uh, we have uh, region 10. Basically, we are in uh, region 10, Asia Pacific and whole Asia uh, from Pakistan to New Zealand and Mongolia to Singapore. Uh, China, India also involved in region 10 IEEE. And we had a flagship conference that is IEEE TANCON. And we got best paper award for this one because it is one of the future research. Router aggregate packets and forwarding to the same network like domain A and domain B. We have prefix data A and data B. And basically we are communicating with each other naming. That is another flavor of our network, future network. We can communicate with each other by naming or location instead of IP addresses. IoT requirements and NDN supports. Basically, NDN supports uh, name data, uh, anycast, multicast, in network cache, content base, and connection less. So that these are some uh, support regarding NDN and IoT. Again, uh, previous diagram was very, uh, last time I shown your ICN diagram, TCPIP. That was layman diagram. Now that this one is a more technical diagram, IP-based approach, uh, name data networking. Last time uh, I informed you about IC, ICN, information centric network. Basically we change instead of IP uh, contents, 
now we have a data chunk or naming street of ip so we have different flavors for name data networking and ip based approaches okay summary and challenges deployment of information centric network uh, we have different uh, possible or conceptual ideas maybe uh, we cannot change our internet maybe we will go for hybrid ic and tcp ip application layer and access layer so we can use as a hybrid internet maybe more uh, usable then maybe another idea like clean salt mode either maybe we can use only information centric network that is i i believe that from my understanding impossible we cannot shut down our current internet and then come up with uh, icn then uh, we have icn as a overlay means we can use overlay like uh, application layer icn tcp ip and access layer also so means we can use overlay or uh, underlayer also here is underlayer we can use in a different ways from my understanding uh, we need another internet we need an uh, a parallel internet maybe we can use as a information centric network as a hybrid or underlay or overlay that is my idea now summary and challenges in which stage of uh, ica basically activities irtf ietf Inter internet research task force internet engineering task force basically currently uh, we are on research mode about icn we are writing rfcs requests for comments some discussions and normally itf it has each year three meetings and i also attended as a uh, fellow itf another organization it is icann information cooperation for name and internet cooperation for name and numbering that is also i attended few times and another organization we have apn asia pacific advanced network uh, they are responsible for education network or education uh, future network pakistan also member and malaysia also member of apn under hsc we have one uh, another sub layer of hsc pakistan research education network parent uh, in malaysia we have myran malaysian research education network uh, these are the bodies they are doing some research about icn and then of course after that we must come up with a standard like ieee has some standards for example wifi ieee 802.11 and same something like uh, wimax also ieee standard bluetooth also ieee standard so we need standard as well as after that we need billion dollar investment like uh, as i mentioned also us also they are planning to invest in icn and also fp7 like uh, european union they want they want to invest in icn so hopefully uh, we will get our parallel internet soon thank you questions and suggestions are welcome thank you kashif uh... it's a nice and informative talk uh, i have uh, one question uh, that what do you think about the impact of uh, industry 4.0 technological revolution on scientific research yes that is very uh, important question basically as i mentioned ir 4.0 is very necessary in our life if we have internet i think it is very compulsory especially li like now covid 19 era Uh, we have uh, suddenly we have we become all universities became uh, like a distance distance learning universities and we had no plan for internet and some students they are suffering and i believe that if we use or utilize ir 4.0 properly uh, then we will move forward for example in malaysia we have uh, uh, like a trains with driverless and these trains come on time so they they also use uh, basically ir 4.0 and they have uh, these buses also connected with uh, each other and in buses we have internet and we have uh, public places we have internet and we use uh, this internet and in future basically for jobs also depend on ir 4.0 basically uh, 
in future jobs basically depend on IR 4.0 because computer science field and emerging fields and we will get job maybe petroleum companies as well as well as like last time I work in uh, Petronas I did my PhD from University of Technology Petronas and Petronas has twin tower basically that is island gas company Malaysia they had uh, they have more than 20 projects uh, among uh, different countries included Pakistan and they they have a, an engineering university they hire uh, they give fully funded scholarship to undergraduate. After that, they have bond for five years. Uh, they have to work with them, like civil engineer, mechanical engineer, computer science, also with petroleum. So I believe that in future, uh, basically, our life depend on internet and IR 4.0. Uh, how we uh, end up with another question is how we improve uh, business management process through the use of ICT and Industry 4.0 information technology? Yes. Uh, suppose if we will go for ICT, ICT is a very general term, means like uh, ICT means information communication technology we can use everywhere. And using uh, IR 4.0, I would like to say that like businesses like, uh, like chain management, manufacturing, uh, like uh, vehicles and these things, we will use these smart technology and we can transform our life and uh, we need a digital, uh, we need high speed internet. That is very important. We need fiber basically. And if we have a fiber internet, then we can change our businesses because if we have no electricity, no internet, we cannot change. So that is, you know, very important internet and electricity. Like in Malaysia, basically uh, we, we never see any, load shedding and we never see any internet disconnectivity if something happen they will inform us uh, for maintenance so i think internet and electricity very important for businesses if we have internet then we can use ir 4.0 and in malaysia basically we already implemented ir 4.0 on multiple things especially in our education sector businesses uh, it or non-it businesses as well as uh, agriculture businesses as I mentioned, we can come up with uh, some sensor technologies, drone technologies, future technologies. So, uh, thank you, uh, Kashif. And we have uh, um, with us uh, Professor Dr. Bhavani Shankar Chaudhary uh, and uh, Dr. Bhagwan Das. Uh, sir, I welcome you here. Uh, thanks for your participation and for listening to this talk. If you want to say something, uh, Dr. Bhavani, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I will uh, uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Sadiq for uh, organizing such a nice lecture and the talk of Dr. Kashyap Nisar. Uh, though I was having another meeting of uh, National Scientific Committee of HEC, overlapping but i got permission from there and then i started attending this uh, whole lecture uh, really very interesting especially industry 4.0 agriculture 4.0 all the smart homes and uh, more about uh, icn i think uh, most of those things uh, uh, icn were quite new to me uh, and I think uh, uh, we can request uh, Dr. Kashyap Nisar to suggest some way forward for our faculty member, researcher. I don't think people are, uh, they are not involved in like uh, there is an internet society or IRTF or IETF. So I think uh, the researcher from Pakistan, they should involve themselves and Maybe you may give few suggestions. How should they, uh, you know, contribute or be a part uh, of those uh, big task forces? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor Bhavani uh, Shankar. Really, I appreciate you attended my seminar. It's my pleasure. Hopefully, we will organize uh, seminars uh, at mute as well as, and everyone can attend the seminars for future technology. Thank you. Kashif, I have uh, another question from the participant uh, that uh, 
Does Industry 4.0 support integration across the value chain? Yes, of course, it can uh, support uh, value chain also. And as I said to you, uh, computer science is emerging technology. If we will say computer science or IR 4.0, it is not only for computer science, IR 4.0 basically, I can say, as I said to you, internet of thing, in, everything on internet. So now everything on internet, so basically it support IR 4.0 support everything, not only one thing, a few things. And how the job market of uh, network uh, related to demand from the industry side and what are the new technology that students should uh, learn in terms of job placement in uh, near future? Okay, that is a good question. Basically, in computer science, we have two uh, basic fields, software engineering and networking engineering. Uh, software engineering change very fast. I can say each second change. Uh, if suppose someone uh, knows some Visual Studio, Microsoft Visual Studio, he or she maybe didn't touch maybe Visual Studio or didn't program something maybe three months, then they have a difficulty to, to do because new technology, new programs, new libraries come. Same like in networks, networks also change. Uh, but uh, like as I said to you, one of the IR 4.0 uh, zero network uh, is software defined network. Basically software defined network, basically it is a virtual network and for future direction or future jobs, I think, I believe that for networks, currently I'm talking about networks, uh, multiple jobs will come for network engineers, uh, future networks because everything is connecting. We need people especially in server rooms, uh, they can work from home, they can work from remotely, they can work for, uh, physically. Uh, in future, maybe uh, jobs, maybe not physically, maybe you can uh, control your networks uh, remotely, like uh, what we are working right now, we are work from home, but now I, we already started work from office also. Uh, so I think uh, everything is depend on uh, future networks and we have lot of jobs i believe that i would like to suggest uh, because i am from computer science or computer network i believe if someone in computer science field or network field i think they are on the right place like for example I, as an academician if i want to change a university i think each or every university has computer science department so i can go easily i, I can find my job easily if suppose i have uh, maybe a pharmacy a degree or i had a i am a pharmacy professor, so then I have to go that specific university. So that is, I think, different between computer science and other fields. Uh, one question is how the industry 4.0 uh, can uh, revolutionize the IT sector of Pakistan? Uh, that is very uh, good question, important also. Uh, <laughs> uh, basically, we need electricity, then internet, if these things uh, we have, then we can reshape our country. Like for example, uh, you know, like in Malaysia, we have one uh, city, it's called Cyber Jaya. Cyber means, uh, cyber means computer, or cyber means like networking, and Jaya means success, means future success through network or through communication. We must have uh, in our country, maybe one city, like a digital city or uh, maybe digital city or cyber city at uh, in our country. And then we can make some policies and some ideas and we can share this technology and we can improve these things. And other things uh, we can use uh, like these seminars. Basically now, uh, you know, we have COVID-19, but uh, due to virtual uh, communication, we can manage these seminars. Uh, those uh, sitting outside, uh, outside Pakistanis, then they can share this knowledge and then maybe uh, we can move forward. And these ideas, ideas very important basically if we have to change or like especially in agriculture because our country is agriculture country. If we will come up with uh, some latest technologies, uh, we can provide our farmers uh, like the smartphones. Those are maybe China phones, not expensive Android phones. And then they can use, they can check weather sheets and other things as well as, and they can use uh, other technologies as well as I think we need to reshape without 
impossible to move forward. That's my suggestion. Thank you, uh, Kashif. Uh, and I'm really uh, thankful for your nice and informative talk. And uh, I'm thankful to all the participants uh, uh, of this online webinar on the network evolution. Uh, and I'm very thankful to Professor Dr. Bhavani Shankar and uh, especially uh, Professor Dr. Iqbal Chaudhary, Coordinator General Compsite and Director of ICCBS uh, for his presence. And thank you, Kashif, once again. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Have a nice day.